terms, not in terms of you know the victims that we then you know in a way produce after '83. No? So what is very interesting here is that um, this idea of the victims giving meaning to a period in national history, which you criticized, in a way is also drawn from a Catholic tradition that where you know. The, 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 the poor and the martyrs or the witnesses of the suffering of Christ are the ones who give meaning to things. Huh? Um, so I think that, uh, you know, I mentioned this and I think it's something, one of the rich aspects of the book is that you have that tension here. You could do the two things with Catholicism. These guys were doing one, you know, they use it. But you could do, in a way, something that undermines that. Uh, and in a way, today, has prevailed over that you know, a version of Catholicism. You know, without going into your very interesting discussion of the Pope and, and everything, and, you know, I think it's, it would be very interesting if, you know... Send him a copy of the book. Yes, you know, <laughs> you know, I was saying, in a few years, you know, people would say, oh yes, Pope Francis, yeah, he was one of the victims, you know. Uh, he could be very well, you know, taken that way, because he's aligned with that order. Yeah, view. Yeah? It's, it's ridiculous, but, you know, so... The other thing that I want to mention is um, one point that as a historian I think is very important, which is what Federico says that um, concentration camps, torture, all those uh, fantasies are not just uh, pathologies of ideology, they are the ideology. No? Violence is ideology, uh, is central, so we cannot, uh, oh, you know, nobody could write this book in the sta following the standard rules of intellectual history. You really have, have to understand who was winning, who was losing, what were they doing, how action was part of ideology. And I, you know, I really appreciate that because um, I, I think that, uh, as Naram suggested, no, there is a tendency to uh, try to create you know, intellectual traditions and genealogies that are very neat and very, you know, very flow very smoothly. You know? Uh, but if you don't understand these uh, nasty, you know, kind of ideologues, you are missing, you know, a large part of the of the history, you know. And um, you know, I also appreciate that myself, as I said to Federico last time we presented the book, because I also, have, I mean, maybe my historical subjects are not so nasty as his. They're pretty nasty. I mean, so they're like these criminals, that, you know. Uh, they do less damage. I don't know, you know, just, you know, I don't know, we will have to look at the homicide rates, you know, <laughs> but it's, um, I think I, I, I empathize a lot with the effort and, you know, obviously I, I admire also the, the, the clarity with which Federico does it, of uh, looking at the histories that these guys produce, you know, because they also write, they also have their magazines, they also have their novels, memoirs, uh, they, they, they produce a lot of text, no? So, you know, someone has to sit down and read them, uh, and someone has to extract sense, you know, from that. And I'm really glad that it was Federico who did it in this case. He, he did it in a good way, and as, you know, as, as Nara mentioned, you know, in a way that is personal, you know, you know, we're all part of this story, you know. Um, but with enough uh, sense of irony and, and, and kind of, uh, with enough, distance in a way, which is also necessary, to say, well, this is ridiculous. So this is something that uh, it, we don't, its weirdness requires an explanation, obviously, but that doesn't mean it isn't weird, right? I mean, it's not something that we associate with politics. That it, it's good to express that sense of detachment from what you're narrating in a way, and I think that Federico uh, does it, in, again, in a very way, a good, clear way, very courageous way too, because, you know, he, you know, he says things very clearly, I think, and in a way that I'm sure will be very productive for, for the history of, uh, or the historiography of Argentina, because it challenges a lot of the assumptions that we usually use, you know, when we teach this history. I, you know, the last point, you know, that I mentioned last time, even the way we divide Argentine history in periods, uh, this book is challenging that, which is no small feat, you know, in other words, we, t we tend to think in, in, in very neat periods, but what Federico is saying is that there's something going on that happened through more than 70 years that is very coherent, very influential, um, that you know achieved power eventually. You know? So how can we 
we cannot really split that into into small sections of pieces. We have to understand it as a as a whole. So that's why the book, uh, you know, encompasses all these uh, you know all these uh, different moments of Argentine history and it does it in a in a very consistent way. I mean, it doesn't stray. It doesn't uh, contextualize too much. It doesn't it doesn't go into unnecessary depth. It's it, it's very clear about the the story that is telling. And, and the and the reason why it matters. So thank you very much. You want to say something? Or? <laughs> <laughs> you agree with everything? I agree with everything. Uh, I agree with everything. I have some comments to make, but basically I, I agree, and I thank you all for uh, reading my book in such a in, in such a expansive and. and Critical way. Uh, some of the things I wanted to say, some others I wanted also implicitly to say, some others you have told me that I was saying this, I totally agree. That's why I, that's why I, I agree with you. So, um, and which is, I mean, it's fantastic I and mean, it's such a, such a joy when the book is out because one many times finds out that, I mean, that really, yeah, yeah, this is what I was thinking and I somehow the text is suggesting this, although somehow I did not. You can analyze it as much or gave it the coherence, but suddenly the text acquires, which is great. I mean, it's really rewarding for me to hear I mean, to hear I mean, these comments. And um, so I will start making a, a small uh, uh, answers and, and short comments on the on by the clock, like on the different because I was taking notes and, and uh, at the same time that I was learning and enjoying this this exercise, which is, is fantastic to be doing and learning all after that. Um, so basically, uh, regarding the Nara's very perceptive and generous comments, uh, uh, I think that, it, I mean, when, when you were saying that I mean, the laterality of your position, which for me, I mean, uh, uh, is extremely uh, rewarding that this is the case, that I'm reaching out to, basically not to the, to the, the public, that, that, that generally um, might be perhaps directly interested in my book because of the talk, even if they don't agree, or even if Perhaps because they captured you, and yes, yeah, you have to read everything in your feed. And and um, and basically, I I I fully agree with your. Um, I mean, with basically with everything you said, I really like uh, how you presented this, this uh, book as a diachronic genealogy of ideas. Because I'm all the time, I mean, how you basically work on on, on, on very uh, uh, on a trans transnational history before, I somehow realized that the, the moment. Uh, I mean, what I wanted to, uh, the, the way in which I wanted to expand my research, and in the epilogue of my last book, this was kind of suggested, I think, uh, was to precisely take uh, the opposite way. Why? Because of uh, the, the state of the thing that you so uh, uh, cautiously described. Because, I mean, if the problem in the 1920s and 1930s, as I saw it, I mean, the historiographical problem was that there was too much, a kind of too much of, a, of an Argentine. Uh, 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 well, I cannot help but say provincial, although they meant it in a very opposite way, which is centra the centrality of Argentine, of the Argentine dimensions of, the, of Argentine politics. For the 1910s, 20s, 30s, I felt that there was a need to, to see this in, in global terms, in terms of the transnational needs. And I saw that that was lagging in the historiography. And the way I came to that realization was through the sources. Because suddenly I saw that the sources were all the time uh, uh, basically talking about things that historians were not interested in because it was the European connection or outside of Argentine borders. And most historians would claim or would recognize or even agree with the fact that fascism could have and did exist in Chile or Brazil, but not in Argentina because we are very special, very different, and we have nationalism that had nothing to do. I mean, they were even, as I said, like able, able to realize that fascism was a global phenomenon, but not in Argentina. And, and eventually, this is a nationalist argument. This is a kind of uh, incorporation uh, uh, of, uh, or even acting out of tendencies. This is a very disturbing acting out because these are tendencies that are going on in the fascist sources, or as they would say, extreme right sources. They were willing to grant that kind of extreme rightness to the movement uh, that they were starting. So basically, that was a problem. Suddenly, I started seeing the sources, all these references to. Um, to the 1920s to the 1930s, and in a way, I mean, 
if, I mean, Argentine fascism is an exaggeration of the Argent of Argentine jokes, you know, if the Argentine joke or the, or the stereotype of the Argentine is a very self-absorbed, hyper-nationalist individual, well, fascism is about that. And basically they were recreating Argentine traditions in ways that, that, that was trying to, uh, to rethink, the, the, I mean, the, the way they are actually, sorry to use a positivist kind of phrase, actually the country was born. Uh, which was, I mean, as Tudor Green put it, I mean, was more liberal. This is a presenting, presenting the Constitution and so on. And, and, and one of the, I mean, and I will return to this issue which Jose mentioned, where one of the strategies was republicanism. And that particular word goes from the most important, the, the, I mean, one of the most important and the first uh, Argentine nationalist or, or uh, magazine, which was called La Nueva Republica, the New Republic, to the program of the last military dictatorship which they prepared a document talking about the new republic how the new republic was going to, to be and how the dictatorship would rule until the year 2000 that was the plan um, so that, that was one of the things but going back to, to the issue of the sources and how I planned this kind of very national history um, is that, that I saw that for the Cold War I mean after 45 suddenly everybody was talking uh, again I think in a very self-serving way, at least in Argentina, uh, about how all our problems have nothing to do with us. So basically what you have is that, I mean, there are different tendencies in Argentina, like to say uh, this is an issue of the French, and there are a lot of books about how this was the French doctrine of national security, and this, you know, basically it came to Argentina, we have a dictatorship, and now we can be free again, I mean, because we are being Argentine again. But suddenly by ignoring Europe or the US, we can be Argentine. And my point, which was basically coming from the sources, that there is a lot of Argentine in all these nasty guys that I have been reading about, that this is not really, because we again come, come back to this uh, nationalist idea that everything bad comes from abroad, everything good is, is, uh, from, it comes from within. And, and um, so basically that was something that, that I wanted to discuss with, and the book provided an opportunity to do so through the sources, because this is how I, I, mean, I came to this realization. Uh, so as it is generally the case, that uh, with the way to, I mean, one starts reading historiographical paradigms in the secondary bibliography and eventually one reaches the, the archives, the sources, and, and sometimes one sees that it's not exactly as, that, as they are telling us. And this is the start of a new project, generally. If, if this is not the case, then why do that project? Like, I, mean, we just, I, mean, I mean, anyway, so that's how you know, it works for me. And, and the opposite, the, the other thing, which, he, which is sometimes complemented with this stress on the French, is the US. That, we have uh, the dictatorship, which, which is, you know, all, all these techniques and, 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 and preoccupations were basically uh, coming from the US. And then, and then again, behind this critic, what you have is a nationalist argument about how they are, in a way, the military now are somehow betraying the essence of Argentine by following US tendencies. So this is not the case as the sources understand it, uh, uh, understood it, and, and sometimes. Some, some sources, particularly by the end of this history, although they, all the, they are all the time uh, reaching important places of power, uh, by the end of the history they are in power, they do what they want, and because, I mean, and my argument is that part, part, at least partly, but also very importantly because of national traditions of extreme right uh, wing thinking, and specifically fascism. So, um, but in a way, yes, this is, I, I was, okay, this is, it's great how you put it, uh, that this is bad, bad guys in uh, history. Um, and, and, and it is in the sense, I mean, of my own politics. That, I mean, it's very difficult to, uh, in a way, that's, that is the easy part. That is very easy, it's very difficult to identify with this kind of sources. So, you know, it's, it's good to put the difference. The opposite problem many times emerges uh, for all of us dealing with bad guys, which is the kind of this rejection, uh, political, and, and even in terms of Africa, it's just disgusting. And, and thereby, there is the, there is the possibility of uh, pathologizing the sources. Mm -hmm. Suddenly they are crazy. So they do this because they are crazy. And uh, here is uh, something that, that you also stress, Nara, which is ideology. And my, my answer to, to that tendency that we all, I mean, I have, uh, uh, because it's, you know, uh, sometimes I'm reading this stuff and I said to myself, or even sometimes, like, I will start, like, you know, kind of a, a, a anxious uh, laughter. I mean, and I will say, this is too much. I cannot believe they are saying. But now, after that, the point is why they are saying this. I mean, why they are saying this? Why this, in a way, makes sense to them? Because this is, a, this is how I return after that moment of rejection. Because I have 
I mean, I felt that moment of restriction. I mean, and, and, and having trained, I guess, in fascist sources from the 1920s, 30s, 40s, eventually, the closer I get to, to my own age, the more difficult it becomes. Even to the extent, as Daniel says, that this is also a personal history, in the sense that I, that's at least the last, the last chapter, I, I, I was very young, but I lived through it. So I, and I had also personal recollections of the war, of, of uh, Jose, you asked me the other day about this, of the war, of even if I go a little bit, I have one or two memories of the World Cup and, and the transition to democracy and how it was very difficult I mean, to, to somehow leave this uh, dictatorship uh, behind in terms of the politics of memory. Um, and even to the extent that, that in a way, uh, 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 and, and, you know, uh, a colleague from my years uh, here, Leandro, from my years at UBA, uh, we, I mean, I don't know if you will agree with this, but I, I felt, and I actually felt that we all felt, which is a discussion, perhaps we didn't, but I felt that we all felt that one thing that needed to be explained was the dictatorship. And my own, uh, in a way, uh, very lateral way to, to do that was by reading fascism in the 1920s and 30s. And eventually, after finishing the last book, I thought, well, this is the time to, to move forward and try to read the dictatorship and explain, try to explain first to myself what was going on here and what is, if, uh, what are the connections. And, in, and, and the way I see this is a history of constant uh, reformulations. Um, I mean, which are many times, uh, and, and, you know, uh, Paradoxical, and, and that's why I want to, to explain this. I mean, because I don't I mean, I mean Nara, I, you know it correctly, I, I don't deny the bizarreness or even the paradoxical nature of this, but I try to explain how they were moving with, between this world of paradoxes and sometimes explaining uh, those situations uh, to themselves. And this is a nice quote that I, that I have in the book. I mean, uh, because one thing that one could say about these sources is that they provide incredible quotes, which are generally greatly explanatory of whatever they are thinking, as bizarre as it sounds. And one of the quotes is from uh, Father Castellani, a known uh, fascist, a clerical fascist, who said basically in a kind of critique of the, of the now the kind of very crazy nationalists of the, uh, of the 1960s, uh, the Taquaras, and they were, you know, I mean, and I should say that, I say this in the book, that this, the, the average of this group of of Taquara, which were, it was not that large, but it had a huge influence. They were in the front court of the New York Times. They were being praised by the Saudi representative at the UN as an example of the youth, uh, the kind of youth that we want, and so on. And, and, and basically, these were guys that they were just out of, out of high school, and the average of this group was between 18 and 20. And, and, um, and, and Father Castellani said about them, and I thought, this is, this is incredible that he said this, because it's exactly how I how I am analyzing them is that he says, he said, uh, emphasizing this dynamism, um, almost bewildering the dynamism, he said, these guys, estos muchachos, these guys, uh, they don't know where they want to go, no saben a donde quiere ir or llegar, but they know that they want to go there, get there fast. So you see this dynamic of, I mean, counter revolution and revolution, and particularly the 60s is a moment in which Finally, I mean, they, this true, if they weren't conflated before, suddenly they are conflated in a sense that, that, that it goes beyond previous fascist patterns. Because if fascism is neither left nor right, but a combination of the two, suddenly some of these groups go to a very clear uh, left. I mean, and yet with a baggage that, that will be present there, that will remain present there. Um, now, and, and I would like to return to that in, in, in two minutes, uh, because that is also very important. Uh, and so, I mean, you said also many things, and, and I have to say, all the, I mean, I had the great privilege of having all these commentators that have great, been greatly influential uh, in terms of the book. I mean, um, Pablo uh, and Nara and, and, and Caterina also, we participated in, in a couple of workshops in which I presented this work and well, while I was writing it. Uh, and so, uh, and, well, and Daniel was, uh, uh, was in, in the seminars when I was grappling with these issues. Uh, and Jose, I have been talking about this forever. Uh, and and, um, and, and um, because Jose is my fellow and also a, a senior Argentinist in, in the table, uh, and, uh, and, and, and uh, as well as a mentor. And, and also, I mean, uh, has been a great influence in my work, and specifically his book, The Origins of Nazi Violence, has been very influential in my ideological origins of the dirty war. And yet, in a, I was telling Enzo while we were in the subway coming to, to 